Welcome to Unscripted with Russo. For our podcast, we decided to explore the people behind the narratives. I'll introduce decision makers and influencers and find out the intimate story behind their rise to success. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Unscripted with Russo. I'm Ashley Russo, and I am here with Kendall Conrad. And she is a local musician, but I actually hate to say that because you are on a fast trajectory to being a nationally world-known musician, I believe. And we're going to get to say we grew you right here in the Lehigh Valley. Aww, so thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is really cool. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. And we kind of have run into you in various places around the Valley, Kendall, um, seeing you perform uh, right around the corner from our office mm-hmm. at Lost tavern which we're so lucky to have but you do lots of other things so before we get into that I want to get to know you a little bit better where did you grow up so uh, I grew up in Pottstown Pennsylvania it's about an hour from here um, and it's also like an hour from Philly so it's a great spot to be at to get to like all of the major hubs in Pennsylvania like King of Prussia like I'm super close to everything so it's a great spot to be but necessarily there's not uh, there's not a lot to do in Pottstown itself what kind of kid were you? Like, what's your family structure? Do you have brothers and sisters? You know, what were you into? Uh, two younger sisters. So I was the oldest and the wisest and the most <laughs> responsible. I'm also the oldest and we are <laughs> oh, definitely really? the wisest. It's a, it's a big burden to carry. <laughs> it is. Did you have to do a lot of babysitting? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yes. Shuffling? Yes and, and no, yeah. because they were super into uh, basketball, which I started and then kind of I, I got more into music and I stopped the sports. But um, I was the first one to play basketball. And then they both of my younger sisters got into basketball. Um, so there, there was a lot of like basketball practice and games and things. So there wasn't a whole lot of babysitting just because they, they were, were busy. They, they were, were active. Yeah. Yes. So when you were like a little kid, what, what did you do with your sisters? Like what was your, you know, some people played school. Some people did dress up. Like did you guys have activities or things that kind of you were into when it was just your free time That's at home? That's interesting. When I was little. I was big into Barbies okay which is like it's it's such a divided issue now like culturally like Barbie itself well you know? there are now very diverse Barbies though I, I know mean, is, isn't that you know, crazy Barbie has a lot of career potential I know <laughs> it's insane because back then like and I call myself a feminist and I never really thought of Barbie in any negative way you know like we do like the the arguments on social yeah. media about it but like we were I was big into playing like with dolls and dress up and like it's funny that you say that now that I think about it like the creating the stories of like what Barbie would do like we we had intense like like plots and like (laughs) you know what I mean so it's like maybe that's why I'm a songwriter and I'm a storyteller it stems even back from that I think that's true I mean I think that's a huge part of like there's this there's a big theory that you know kids need to play more right Mm -hmm. like and especially now um it's more important than ever to say just go play Mm -hmm. not a video game not on your phone and you know when you talk about that think about what you were learning through that role playing through that story development yeah it's really interesting learning a lot about myself in this i'm so thank you i'm so glad (laughs) i'm like your my mind older sister slash aunt yes i know god here we are together this is fascinating (laughs) so what kind of kid were you you were responsible you were type a you were serious you were funny like how would you describe yourself at nine at nine super quiet Mm. interesting Um, not wallflower quiet like not like just it wasn't that I I didn't have anything to say or anything like that like I always had opinions and I like to read a lot um and I like learning and all of that and and talking about like topics and issues and things even at nine I remember liking that um but just like reserved maybe um very laid back like I just I never needed to be at the center of the party or center of attention or it's very quiet I think that's an important thing to point out though because often when people go into a career that kind of thrusts you into the limelight right which is a lot what happens in music or Mm -hmm. what happens in television yeah I think people assume that you were chasing that and in reality that's I find it to be very rarely the case like I think Mm. people are actually worrying about honing their craft and telling a story or other things and that just happens to be a byproduct of that do you feel that way yeah like it's it's we're in this kind of viral TikTok meme era as well with like the media and social media and all that and it's like I was never chasing to go viral for the sake of being famous like that was never the goal like it was always centered around my music like if I can if my song goes viral that's great you know like a leader of the pack suddenly if I logged on to my Spotify and it blew up and it went viral because some viral you know whatever used it I mean that's awesome but like that is never like the it's not end. the motivator. No, yeah. it's not. It's not. When did when did music come into your life? So you mentioned sort of starting with basketball. Do you have a musical family? 
Are your uh, parents musical? My mom played piano, um, but nothing. No. Absolutely nothing. And they, so did you just pick up a guitar? I mean, how did this start for you? So it started, I don't even, you know, I've been, I just have been doing it my whole life. It's so hard to like pinpoint when. Um, they just, they always, my parents always played music in the house, like a lot of different kinds of music. Um, I remember my dad likes Janet Jackson, Stevie Nicks, and then my mom likes Diana Ross and Whitney and Shania Twain. And we had tons of Gloria Estefan and all that stuff. Like we had so many different. You had an eclectic, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I, I heard all of it. Um, and then I just, I was like, God, I want to do that. I don't even know why. I don't even know what possessed me. I was just like, I think I could do that. I think I can sing. Like, I don't even and know And so did why. it start with the singing? Yes. And did you, yeah. did, were you singing in the shower? Were you singing in your room? Did you say, I need lessons? I mean, All right, where did so it go? All right, so we, I, I was super into um, horses when I was a kid. And I had my own horse. I did horseback riding. I did the whole thing. Uh, another chickens. thing we have in common. Really? Mm-hmm. No way. See, guys, horses, my team, they make fun of me all the time. But I feel there's this, when you're a horse person, there's the bond That's of horses. That's so crazy. I know. I also did musical theater, but I did what? not become a musician. I'm just saying. As a theater major. Well, listen. Look Whoa. at us connecting. <laughs> I love it. That's all right, crazy. so you're into Whoa, the horses. The parallels. Yeah, so I um, had my own horse. We had chickens and all that. So I think when I first started, like, quote, unquote, singing, like, I had one of those portable boom boxes. You put the CD in. And I would take it out to Are the barn. Are you old enough to even own one of those? Yeah. They still made those? Yeah. Wow. Look at Heck you. Yeah. That's that's like old school that you even had something like <laughs> yes. that. Yes. And so like, you know, the little ones and you could do, kind of pick it up, take it anywhere. And I would take it out to the barn and we had electricity out there, obviously. So I would plug my boom box in and I would sing Whitney Houston to like the chickens. I yeah. would perform for the them. animals. Well, you know, it's funny. One of the things people say, <laughs> the reason people love connecting with animals, particularly horses or cats mm. or dogs, is that they don't judge you. It's a no yes. judgment zone, right? Like yeah. they love you. They're happy to see you and you can just sort of be yourself. And that's a big reason that they're used for therapy and other things oh, like that's, that. So that's I love to hear that. That's interesting. Yeah. So you would just, you just sort of would belt it out. Yeah, for like I was like thought I had an audience with these chickens, <laughs> and like we had named them all. Like we had a lot of chickens at one point, and so like we were very close. Like they were pets, these chickens, and so I would go out and I would, I would straight up like put on a show for these birds, um, <laughs> and I cringe now even thinking about it. Like God, what was I thinking? But I mean, it, that's how I started doing it. You know, when did you think this is more than singing to the chickens? Like, when did you think this is something? When did the songwriting start? When did you learn to play the guitar? So um, I always say that I I had a I forget when I had a hostess sing job. That was the only real job I ever had at an Italian restaurant and folded the silverware and sat people. And uh, I was learning guitar at the same time. So it was like 17, 16 or 17. And um, I hated this job. I like, oh my God, it was awful. I hated it. And I saw like around my town, around Pottstown, these flyers and things of these older men that were gigging. And like, it was just solo acoustic. It was them and a guitar. And they were getting paid to do it. And I was like, oh my God, I can get paid to sing and the people will pay me. And I don't have to, I don't have to fold silverware. So I quit my job. And I went down to uh, Sam Ash and King of Prussia with my dad. I'll never forget it. We got all this equipment we had no idea how to use. And we set it up like at home and like tinkered and figured out how to use it. And then like I would just email a bunch of like bars and stuff in the area. Be like, hi, I've never done anything like this. Will you pay me to play in your restaurant? And who was the and first to do it? I believe it was All Star in Gilbertsville. That was the first person that ever gave me a shot and booked me. That's amazing. Yeah. And what was that first experience like? So you walk in, you've got this great idea, <laughs> but you've never really done it. It's no. a whole different story. What was that <laughs> What was that first night like? I, I was like, my dad in the beginning would come to every gig and set me up and run my sound. And um, and he would do this like on top of his job and I wouldn't pay him for it. <laughs> he was a saint. <laughs> you mean like all parents, we pay for all the supplies, yes. but you get to keep the profit? Yes. 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 Like That's every like that. parent who's ever run a lemonade stand. I know. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's exactly that. Um, All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I do want to talk a little bit more about your parents and this idea of chasing a dream uh, and then the role they've played in that. So we'll be back with Kendall Conrad right after this. Ever wonder what you get when you combine an historical Riverside City, high-end dining, entertainment venues, and craft distilleries? The city of Easton, of course. One of my favorite spots is the Easton Public Market, right in the center of it all. 
but there's a variety of places to choose. Whether you're looking for a park to unwind or a night out with friends, check out Discover Lehigh Valley's website to find all the hot spots in Easton. Visit their website at discoverlehighvalley.com for more information. All right, we're back with Kendall Conrad, an amazing musician. She's telling us a little bit about getting into music, playing with Barbies, what kind of kid she was, hating her first job, propelling her to find <laughs> her now career in uh, performing music. So I want to ask you a bit about your parents because you talked about your dad setting up and doing your audio checks and being there to support you and buying you this equipment. And, you know, it wasn't like you came from this big musical family where this was a part of your narrative, right? This was something you were saying, this is a dream, this is a thing I want to do. Um, you know, do you have perspective yet on that, of what that might mean, of what it meant to have your parents support um, telling you you could do anything you wanted to do? It's interesting because, especially with these reality TV shows like The Voice and American Idol and all that, you get those people on there that it's like, it's been an uphill battle, my family doesn't support me, you know, those those sob stories right. and it's like I I'm so lucky that I never had to to deal with that um and I don't know why actually like they were just both like yeah do it you're I don't I they're insane um they never were like it's a maybe. gift I mean it really is a gift I yeah think. yeah because I think that you know there's a lot of this idea of like you have to take a traditional route and you need to get a traditional education and you need to get a traditional job and sure you can do this little thing on the side mm -hmm. right like that's kind yeah. of the it's the a way hobby people like look oh at, yeah like you sing as a hobby and I even get people that it's like um like I get paid to sing it's my job right and like people wanting to do like these huge like four-hour gigs like do you just show up like for free and I'm like like do oh, I ask paid you artists yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I read this tweet from this other uh musician and she was saying she asked someone it's like oh well you know what do you do and they're like I'm an accountant she's like can you come over and do my taxes for free <laughs> like you know and I think because it's it's music is like it's an art and it's not something physical or it's not like a service that you're providing something with like an out like it's it's just for for pleasure right you know, but you know people I have always heard and especially women that if you love what you do, you tend to undervalue it. And what, I was told that when I started huh. this business because I love what I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told by several more you know, senior, sophisticated women, just because you love what you do does not mean you get to undervalue it in the marketplace. It doesn't mean you get to cut everybody a break or give everybody a deal. That's great. And it was such, it took me a couple years to really feel comfortable with that and say, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we're, and then and then I think it value, you put value on yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you value yourself, other people value you. And if they don't, like, that's fine, move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think if you don't do that, it gets to you. Like, yeah. if you don't think that way, like, you start to get really down. And you get resentful. Yes. Really. And you kind of have control over that. Yes. So. And I do have those moments where I get really, like, bitter yeah. and angry at, like, the business, the way the world is. Um, it's a tough industry. I mean, tell me a little bit about, at this point in your career, um, what have you learned? You've been you've been doing this professionally, what, now, about five years? Um, that well, my first gig I was like 17 or 18 and I'm 28 okay so 10 years so yeah it's you know, a long time yeah and it's not an easy road it's it you know tell us about the things and and the pieces that come into play you know yeah there's the writing of the music and there's the performing but mm -hmm. there's everything in between like if you think of writing it as step one and performing it as step 10 you do marketing and business development it's and everything. sales and finance, right? Like yes. all of that comes into play. And so your social media. Yeah, and so like, which is now the whole thing, right, mm -hmm. basically. So tell us a little bit about the parts of the job that you've done and what do you love and what parts do you hate but you like force yourself to do? Okay. Um, well, I have a love-hate with social media. Like I think it's it's great that you can reach so many people like right at your fingertips. Like, it's all there. You can email whoever you want. To, like, the, all of their contact info for these, like, the CEO of ESPN. And, like, you can get to all these people. But at the same time, I hate it because everyone can get to these people. So they're, like, swamped. You know, Twitter is swamped with DIY musicians and artists and things. So it's it's figuring out how to cut through the noise of that with a product that I think is great and I believe in. And that I'm looking at these other things that I don't think the quality is there, but somehow they're getting traction. And then I go back and I have to look at, you know, what are they doing? They're smarter than me, obviously, because they're doing it and I'm not. And I think my product is better. Um, so I it's it, I love social media and then I hate it. 
Um, and also like the cross, I don't know if you deal with this or your team deals with this, the cross posting on like Instagram you post it on the Facebook page and then your Twitter and Always. you have to it's like. It's a constant conversation uh, of how do you create original content right. for each platform. Yes. Right. So that it, yeah. you know, I like, I don't love when, and I'm just talking about your, like your friends, right? Mm-hmm. Like they put a post and it's all, it's on Instagram and it's on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I go toggle between and I'm like, yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. Put something different. And yeah. I try never to do that. Yes. <laughs> but, but also like you have a different like um, the clientele fan base like on my Facebook. Right. Versus like it's a whole different group of people sometimes on my Twitter. You know, so it's well, like. you have to reach people where they are too. And that's what I'm been, saying. Yeah, how, so it's how like. How thin do you spread yourself? Yes. Now what about the business side of it? You know, who helps you with that? Do you have a team now? Is it family based? So uh, it used to be just me and my mom. And uh, I would do, I would book my own, which I still do, my local gigs. Um, my three hour cover song, me solo acoustic. Like I book all of those myself. And then like my bigger shows, um, like when I opened for Blake Shelton. Like, my mom booked that. Like, she does the big stuff. And we kind of, like, tag team it with that. Um, and then I book my own, like, when I go to Nashville, I book my own rights. And I do all that. So she kind of does, like, the bigger things, like the anthems, all of that. I don't really do that um, personally myself. Like, we have, like, a form email and that she well, uses. I would imagine for certain things you need a front man, right? Like, you mm-hmm. need somebody who is representing you. Right. Right? And you mm-hmm. see so many moms, right, that mm-hmm. are in the business. Yeah. Um, tell me about some of those big gigs. Tell me about Blake Shelton. Tell me about Keith Urban. Tell me about what what is that like? You're, you're you know, one week here at Lost Tavern, which is like our little brewery in yeah. Hallertown, who we love. Where we met. Where we met. Yeah. And, and we love it. And it's a great local. But you're also then turning around and getting on a plane and performing on these huge stages. So it's how so do you balance weird. that? It's so weird. Like, it's like you can play, like, I've, I've talked to other local musicians about it. Um, and it's like, you can play this bar for, like, two people. And then you get a call and it's like, oh, my God, I'm opening for Charlie Daniels at the summer concert series. And it's, like, sold out 3,000 people. And it's in the same weekend. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, like, so weird. And then you go back to playing, like, two people. And people at the bar are like, wow, you're really good. You should, like, be doing stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> just, well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, It's Bill. interesting that we know I, I, I'm friendly with Craig Thatcher. Okay. Um, I've never and, met him. And, oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, that is a connection we have to make. Okay. He's amazing. Right. Um and uh, and and Ni- Ni Van Wick, who he works mm-hmm. with, they're just super talented I know musicians, him. and they've been We've all met. okay. So mm-hmm. they're amazing. And you know, Craig always says that he travels the world, but there's nothing like coming home mm-hmm. and playing to a small, intimate hometown crowd, like mm-hmm. maybe for a fundraiser or something like that. And mm-hmm. and you you know, he gives it all. But I think maybe it keeps you humble, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe it kind of helps yeah. keep you grounded mm-hmm. through the whole thing. Yeah, and also sometimes those those bigger gigs, like they people think that they pay like. Five thousand. Like, are they paying you a huge amount of money? And it's like, no, not necessarily. Sometimes the the bar gig with two people pays way more. It's yeah. like weird. That's interesting. Well, maybe the ex- they know that the exposure and the name you're tied oh. to matters. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's you can't put a price on that. You know, like Blake Shelton was eighteen thousand people there. And Imagine how many bars you have to sing in to reach eighteen thousand oh people. You know, and it's like yeah, and it's like I you literally you cannot pay for that kind of. Tell me about the personal side of your life a little bit. You know, you talked to me a bit, little bit about your childhood, but what, what has the last decade been? You've been really focused on your career. I would imagine it's a little challenging as a young woman to give up your weekends, <laughs> right? Like, how do you have a social life? What do you, what, you know, and, um, and how have you kind of stayed grounded with that, with your friend group? And, mm-hmm. um, you know, just what do you choose to do with your free time? They wind up, like, coming to my gigs or, like, I'll tell them to come an hour early and we'll eat at the place that I'm playing. Um, and then they don't have to stay the whole time, so we'll eat for like an hour before, and then I'll they'll watch like the first set or whatever, and then they'll be like, "Okay, peace." I'm out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, and then it's like, as far as like dating even goes, it's like that's really hard because they all want to go out on the weekends, and I'm like, I can do week, I can do Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I, I work on the weekends. Yeah, that's a challenge. I would yeah, think. and then it's like being local at the same time as like getting these bigger gigs like it's also hard because people think I'm like a celebrity and it's it feels like um I'm going out on a date with someone that I met in a meet and greet and that's it's like frustrating for me because I know that they don't they don't mean it that way and they're like nice but for me it just it feels like I'm on a date with someone at a meet and greet and it's like I'm looking for like a partner and that for me, it's, oh, my God, that gets to me. I would imagine, too, in this day and age, it's so hard for you guys that people, like, everybody can Google everything. I mean, 
like do you ever you show up and you feel like they've they already know everything about me and they've already watched yeah. it's a little yeah yeah and it's bizarre like, yeah and it's like oh i listened to your song on spotify and i'm like oh great so they look me up now you know yeah. and it's like i don't know and i don't I mean it's hard because how would you not right like if you, you yeah i do I mean, it for you go to like linkedin and find out if they're a banker like you probably yes. looked in where they go to college and yes. what they do right okay so it's a it just it does yeah it's, yeah it's interesting yeah all right well we're gonna take a little break but when we come back i want to hear about what's next for you um your commitment to this community and kind of how people can get to know you and your music even better all right okay. stay tuned everybody we'll be right back as a mother of two, I know it can be tough to find activities that everyone will enjoy. Luckily, the Lehigh Valley has so many ways to treat your family without breaking the bank. You can experience cool discoveries at the Da Vinci Science Center or all aboard the WKNS railroad train for an afternoon adventure. There's fun around every corner of the Lehigh Valley, and you can uncover it all on Discover Lehigh Valley's website. Visit discoverlehighvalley.com for more information. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Kendall Conrad, an amazing musician, and she's told us all about her career up to this point. But Kendall, I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of your hopes and dreams. You're 28. You've been a professional musician. Somebody's been paying you to do this for a decade. And you've got some big stuff under your belt. We mentioned Blake Shelton. Um, you mentioned some other – You let's see, I want to look on here and get this correct because okay. you've got – Almost 18,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, I'm told. That's, That's pretty crazy. amazing. You've won some state competitions. Uh, you have performed national anthem all over the place. You performed at the White House, mm. Wells Fargo Center. So we're kind of lucky to have you here in the Lehigh Valley, I feel like. Every time you're performing, I'm like, let's go see Kendall. She's amazing. So yeah, I think yeah. that that's great. So tell me a little bit about what what is next and, and what do you hope to accomplish in the next decade? Um, you know, I'm right now I'm just honestly looking at putting out the next single when I'm going to do that. Um, I have five songs that I recorded in Nashville with Matt McVaney. Uh, and he's with Sony and he's done the, uh, the early Kane Brown stuff, which was great. Like, I think he, he produced Kane's first platinum record, which was awesome. So he knows his stuff, but he also does pop. He produces pop too. So he was like the perfect combination for me. So I was really excited when he wanted to work with me. Um, so we did five songs. I put out Leader of the Pack and Come to Your Senses. And I'm looking at putting out that third song, hopefully in the next couple months. Um, and oh, it's What's it's, the machine that goes around that? Like from the time that you write the song to the time that you work with the producer to the time that you put it out. Tell us a little bit about the machine that surrounds that whole process. And I know it's huge. But yeah. I mean, like with, with the first two singles, I used a publicist. I'm like, I'm not doing this on my own. Um, and they're great. I love them so much. So I'm probably going to use them for the third single as well. Um, so it's like it, it involved like expanding the team, basically. So it was turned in like me and my mom. And then it's like we added all of these other people, which is great. And I like they do great work. Um, so it involved that. It also involved like thinking about things that I, I hadn't really thought about before, like branding specifically with like what what does the single artwork cover say about me? Like, what does the colors, do I want the, wh what font do I want to use? Like, is it like really curly Q font or is it like straight edge, like very masculine font? It was just a lot of. And it is interesting because really you are the brand and then mm -hmm. you have product lines, right? So like y if you want to look at a single as a product line, mm -hmm. right? So you have to have something that ties back to your original brand, but right. also promotes that individual music. Right. Yeah, right. That's a big process. Like it's the song. People think it's accidental and it's actually no, incredibly it's like, purposeful. Yes. Yeah. It's like I, I really like looked at that single artwork before I put that out and like what, you know, what angle and again, like the color of the like the photo itself, like does it have like a kind of like my come to your senses single cover has like a moody purplish kind of like I wanted that I didn't want anything um real bright like a yellow or it was, it's all very it's all very specific and I I love that part the actual creation of it I like I love that so just much. another outlet for your creativity yeah I would imagine. Yeah. yeah and it's it's trying to be smart with it and it's just it's really fun as you get to go to bigger venues and tour more places and visit places tell me what keeps you coming back to the lehigh valley and what you think of this area god i love this area so much i tell everyone like this is my favorite i think it's my favorite part of pennsylvania um just because like it's it's just so vibrant and there's so much to do here and the the people here like everyone appreciates not only music but like art in general it's just a it's a very um 
like a bustling community for art like people are super into like there's like poetry slams and like comedy at the steel stacks and there's there's all sorts of like other independent things. films and yes. horses and come blow glass and yeah I think it's I I agree with you totally yeah. it's, it's amazing to it's me. not just music yeah I, I just and I I feel like I they have that in Philly too but I don't know it's a different I don't know. It's a di- it's a whole different animal here in the Lehigh Valley. I don't know. I just I just I love it so much. I feel more creative coming up here. I don't know. It's just it's very inspiring. Do you feel like regardless of where you go, you will continue to kind of foster a local music scene? Is that oh, part of you? Yeah. I mean, the whole thing with country music is is family, family first, and I I do feel like the Lehigh Valley definitely feels like family to me and you never like you don't spurn your family you know if you like get big or whatever like that's one thing you don't do so awesome. I would definitely yeah absolutely great well yeah. we're so lucky Kendall we hope you continue to play we wish you the best of luck you have been incredible thank you so much thanks for having me thank you for being here <laughs> home to the iron pigs in Dorney Park Allentown is a city without limits food art dance you name it it's got it Allentown's historic roots are matched with its vibrant culture to create an adventure that you'll never forget thinking of taking a trip Follow Lehigh Valley PA on Instagram and you'll find attractions, hotels, and sites you won't want to miss. Okay, I am being joined by local musician Kendall Conrad and we are going to do the rapid fire questions. Kendall, are you ready? I'm a little scared, but let's do it. All right, and you have not heard these questions, correct? I have not heard these questions. All right, what is your favorite hobby? Songwriting. (laughs) It's your career, but okay. (laughs) Reading. Good, I would like that. If you won the lottery, what's the first thing you would do? Buy my dad a Corvette. What is one food you cannot live without? Pancakes. What is your favorite thing to do in the Lehigh Valley? Ooh. Eat. (laughs) What is your favorite restaurant in the Lehigh Valley? Oh, God, you're going to put me on the spot like that? I know. Sorry. God, it depends on what I want. Right now, it's Hop Daddy's. Okay. If what actor would you cast to play you in a movie about your life? Jennifer Lawrence. Such a good answer. (laughs) If you didn't have the job you have now, what would you be doing instead? (sighs) I'd be dead. (laughs) (laughs) Name a person who inspires you. My mom. Thank you guys for listening. Please go to our YouTube channel so that you can see and hear more of Kendall and her amazing interview here today. And we hope that you will consider subscribing to this podcast. Until next time, thanks for listening. (laughs) 